Hello everyone, welcome back to Juno New Origins, where we are not launching this again, but we are resuming a flight from the previous video. And that is the flight that we intend to send over to Solero. Uh, that flight previously carried two small sats, and that is what we have here. The empty small sat sort of platforms. And we will see if we can get over to Solero now. To fulfill that contract. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. We just need to fly by, so that's not too hard. It's got 1.91 kilometers per second, but the problem is uh, we are not at the right opportunity at the moment. Uh, we need to wait until we are in the right alignment. And if uh, if that had been Solero, we wouldn't be too far off, but in fact Solero's back here. That happens to be uh, a comet that is right at Solero's orbit. So, Drew has to go all the way around to catch up with Solero. I don't know if Drew's going to be able to do that in 239 days. We're going to find out. I also don't know if this is still going to be charged up in that time. A million times time warp. Oh, no. There's no way. They might want to give us some more time on these contracts. This is about the proper alignment right here. Um, save flight. We want to save flight. We wanted to try and send this over. Herma flyby now. Where the heck is Herma? And 300 days. It doesn't seem like we took a penalty, I don't think, for failing that previous contract. I don't even know where Herma is. I think it might be the EVE equivalent. Let's see. Let's go back to our little Electron. Which certainly was not... I uh, know it's the right craft... Oh, I can't... Oh, it has to be launch a new craft. Oh, gosh. Okay, you know what? Just to demonstrate that it could have been done, I'm going to send this bloody little thing to Solero. Um, that is not Herma, that is Sergeia. Herma is, no, okay, that's Vulco. I guess we're not going with Hermes as, uh, you know, Mercury is Hermes, and so it could have been Herma, but no, okay, fine. Uh, Tidos. Herma must be another moon of Solero, then. Herma. Herma is that moon of Solero. Okay. So we'll try and send this over to Solero, and then we'll send launch a new craft immediately over to Solero. I think. So let's see if we can plot for Solero, and this will be like a test for the second mission. At least we're in the right window for that mission. So over here, boost up. If you're not familiar with interplanetary transfers, once you have the right interplanetary window, generally the location to boost up if you're going in a prograde orbit is around like 4.30, if that's a clock. Um, maybe in this case 5, and ultimately what you want is... Uh, okay, now it's moving. Uh, the outward bound orbit to match the orbit of Drew here. Hmm, I think uh, this has been done wrong. I wanted to move this one, not create a new one. The less delta V it is, the closer to 6 o'clock it is. And when I said 6 o'clock, I meant 12 o'clock would be in the direction of Drew's current path. This is getting to be a burn very much at 6 o'clock, which is like the... Minimum, and that's because we're just beyond escape here. Well, I think I'll take the 300,000 kilometers and then we'll do a mid-course adjustment after the burn. Okay. Ignition. Oh, throttle's not working today. Ignition. Get a more proper view. It's an odd-looking little thing. Actually, it looks like if you had the engines on the opposite side and had a heat shield on this side, it could, like, do an aero capture 
or something. Okay, okay, um, the Delta V... I thought we did it at the right time, I guess we took a longer time than expected to turn. It's very easy to overdo it. Well, that's getting worse. Alright, let's uh, add a mid-course adjustment. Well, that's within... I mean, technically, we were only supposed to aim for a flyby with this. We don't have to be any more accurate than that. Uh, but, you know, that's within the orbit of the outer moon. So, that'll do. Okay, but we can't focus on this all the way out. Because we need to launch the one that's actually going to fulfill the Herma contract. So, this is just a test to see that we can do it, and we can. So we could have done it with this, but we're not going to do with this. We're probably going to abandon it completely. So let us focus on the one that's going to Herma. Okay, so since we don't have any payloads here, I decided to go with a pressure-fed Hydrolox thing um, that's got to be fairly light, and hopefully we can launch it on the small pad. But maybe we should look into other contracts. I mean, Herma flyby. TT orbit, it doesn't seem super conducive, but a single small sat mission, we've already seen that that could happen, right? That doesn't seem too bad. Then there's this comsat one, but the periapsis is so high, it's got to take extra to get to that. Boosting up a single small sat doesn't seem too bad. It'll make me feel better that we have some payload. Then again, there's these 10 CubeSats. It doesn't matter about the inclination or exactly where they are. The periapsis is low enough that that could still be a good transfer. But we do still have to boost the 10 CubeSats, but they're not that heavy. They're not like the small sats. They're pretty light, I think. Why, why, why if we do the CubeSats and the small sat. But then it has to be in a circular orbit, that's that's annoying. I think we'll just do the 10 CubeSats. Okay, so what I've discovered is sometimes clone parts don't like to have nodes that attach. So what I did was I took these little fuel tanks here and I made, I cloned them with right click to make these other fuel tanks. I rotated them and I've got these CubeSats, which are fine sitting on top of... Oh, okay, now there's... Okay, so sometimes the CubeSats want to sit on top of them, and sometimes they don't. Um, when, they're get... when they get clones, sometimes they lose their attachment point, is what I think I'm trying to say. Okay, so that... Two kilometers per second, but hopefully we won't be using a lot of that to dump the CubeSats, but it's okay if we do. Okay. Now the rest of the rocket. And I would like the rest of the rocket to have enough Delta V to get this whole thing into orbit. This is one ton, again. We've been here before. Well, we've got some interesting propellant choices. Oh, I forgot to paint the payload. So, apparently I shouldn't make it so emissive. There's brushed heavy metal. Sun insulation. Oh, that's the gold foil type. Gold foil would not be wrong. Oh, let's let's okay, fine. All brushed heavy metal. Shoot. It's got it's gotta be shiny, but it's gotta be intentionally shiny. Electric Methylox. That'll have the density to fit the pad. With some efficiency maybe. I mean, it looks like a single stage to orbit system is certainly doable here. But we need to get it under 10 meters. Everything looks like... Like a black arrow. I mean, maybe I should paint the fairing red or something. Everything ends up looking like a back black arrow when we try and fit it onto the small pad. I wonder if there's a way to reduce snappiness. Let's just not show attach points. No, it still snaps to the attach point when I don't show the attachment point. Because uh, I was trying to put three of them here, but it's so close to that attachment point, I can't get it there. 
to put three without it snapping there. There's probably a key to press to prevent it from snapping. Oh, that's probably close enough. That's probably too much thrust weight ratio, though. Well, we're launching 10 CubeSats. Let's have 10 engines at the bottom. Uh, okay, let's let's do the lipstick rocket. Uh, yes, uh, Black Arrow. <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, we'll call this the Purple Arrow because of the hopeful plume of the methane engines. For once, I'll save craft Purple Arrow. Okay, so Purple Arrow, it's 1.4 million, single stage to orbit, hopefully. And then the other stage can do the rest. Okie dokie. Uh, let's give it a go. We know we are at the right timing for Solero slash Herma. And we should be able to use the village pad. It's a Methalox single stage to orbit rocket. You better be able to get to Herma in 300 days. I mean, it still seems really tight. Uh, these windows. I mean, the deadlines. Okay, so. Uh, let me get my throttle working. So, when you and launch. Oh! Um. Well, I guess we'll find out how that works out for us. Um. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll revert that. That was just silly. I'm used to it getting this stuff right now. That is not a situation we needed to belabor. Okay. Um. Yes. Trying this. Ignition. Um. Something has gone horribly wrong. Oh, they're electric fed, except for one. Or maybe maybe they're all electric fed and one is getting some charge somehow, even though the solar panels are in fairing. Okay, well, let's deploy the fairings. That's an interesting thing with the fuel, whatever's going on there. It's trying to decide whether to show the electric... Ooh. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh... We'll re retry, but we'll save flight. These guys need 18.1 kilowatts, and there's 10 of them, and they gotta be constantly firing. Okay, let's try that again. We haven't hurt our Delta V that much. I think the red fairing is cursed. And if you don't know why I made it a red fairing, take a look at Black Arrow. Okay, SAS on, RCS off, throttle up. And third time's the charm. Okay, hopefully we're through maximum dynamic pressure here. There's a single stage to orbit system, so its trajectory is a little bit different than normal, but I have to be careful not to overheat it too. So we're gonna throttle down here. We'll probably let this stage deorbit as well. Now, the CubeSat mission wanted 158 kilometers, so we'll go to that. I'll release the fairings now. Oh, we're overshooting. Don't do that. Uh, okay, that's too much apoapsis. Um... This, this has got to be silly. Uh, I'm going to retrograde a little bit <laughs> to pull that back down again. Remember, folks, it's okay to just leave your rocket spinning sometimes. Okay, you're saying lock prograde and just to stabilize there. Okay, we'll finish off this stage. And... staging? Oh, 
Well, I trust that Sage Delta V will correct soon. Okay, that'll be fine for now. Let's see about getting out to... Oh yeah, that uh, previous solar probe was already in a high orbit, so that was that's its escape. So, Solero, please. And we will make our maneuver. Which we could probably do right now, to be honest. Uh, we'll wait in orbit, though. We'll need to bring the periapsis down. I mean, the apoapsis down if we do it like this. Oh yeah, we have the weird inclination too. Um, yeah, before I plot it, let me bring the apoapsis down. So we're in a nice circular 158 orbit. So that we can definitely get the contract proper. Oh, uh, during time warp it automatically flips like that. No RCS necessary. I didn't even think that it would dare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. So even if you don't have a reaction wheel, if you're in time warp and you click one of these, it'll automatically flip to that, even if you didn't use RCS to do it. Cheats. <laughs> Latent cheating. Okay, 158 by 158. So we'll definitely get a 158 periapsis when we burn out. 300. Well, we saw 300 was pretty good last time. Like last time, let's just leave the rest as a mid-course adjustment. So, total burn 1.38 kilometers per second. We got 1.61 with the cube sets. That leaves us only a little bit to actually manage the Herma flyby. Battery's just 1%. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sun is shining on the solar panels, come on. We didn't do an electric pump fed here this time. We've got a uh, pressure fed engine on this one. The first stage, I guess when it said the amount of power in the set, it included this upper battery, but still we had m way more than the 10 engines on the first stage needed. I estimated for 2.4 minutes total, unless it's consuming battery constantly even when we throttle down, instead of throttling down the battery consumption as well. This is going to be a long burn to 5.6 minutes. Okay, ignition. I'm just going to point prograde because otherwise our periapsis will tend to go down. Now nah, that periapsis is going out of whack. Okay, tilting up helps. Okay, uh, oh, I liked it for a sec there. Shoot. Okay, deploying CubeSats. Very loud sound. Okay, onward. Round, please. We only have 578 meters per second left. Please have enough, please have enough. Okay, we're gonna escape. I'm gonna shut down the main engine for a sec, and I'm gonna use. I mean, because we're so close anyway, I'm just gonna use RCS. Boost up. And we can get a finer, closest approach like that. Okay, well, that's as close as we gotta get like that without the mid course adjustment. We have 236. Now, what I want from the mid course adjustment or correction is not just a tighter flyby, but I would also super duper like that encounter with Herma. Uh, it's constantly correcting itself to be something different than I want. <laughs> I'll probably take that for now. Okay, RCS off and 36.7 there. Let's time warp and we need to make sure we're getting power. Looks like a good position for power to me. 
We only have 3% mod propellant left. Oh gosh. Okay, we better get into Solar SOI before locking that maneuver, otherwise it says something bad about the Delta V. Okay, now when we lock the maneuver, it's the right Delta V. Okay. The engine seems to be in a constant state of tilt. I really should have put less gimbling on it. I don't know if we're going to get there in 288 days, to be honest. What is going on? Why is there a line like that? That's the other probe that we had sent out. This should be close enough. It shouldn't be a very sensitive burn. But we have very little RCS. That's all I'm going to use. <laughs> okay. Very slight ignition. Well, within 0.07 meters per second, the timing's a bit off. Well, let's just go over there. It says we'll reach apoapsis in 124 days, and we'll reach there in 160, so barely, barely we'll make it. And only because we took the contract exactly at the window. Now, since we can't see the map view when we are picking up the contracts, it's tough to plan that. It's just, like, because I had failed the previous contract that we managed at. Where's, which one's the sun? <laughs> There's still too many bloody blue stars around. Oh, there it is. Okay, that should be a good orientation then. I mean, it might be that we can't really get the flyby very well with the Delta V that we have. We've only got 199. We certainly can't capture. There's gotta be some tough planning. Depends exactly how the orbit of Perma is. Well, this isn't too bad, actually. Uh, we can see we're there, it's there. We could probably scooch over a bit. We're much further out than I thought we were going to be. We just want to force that encounter. I don't care about anything else. Oh, well, Herma seems pretty big. We've got an approach there. We didn't get that close, I didn't think. Well, then again, I've been dealing with some small moons. Okay, we've got uh, impact like that. So I'll just sidestep the impact a little bit so we get sort of an optimal thing. And once we get in the SOI, we'll see about capture. I don't know if uh, Herma's helping us slow down. If we try a capture burnout here, that's too much. We don't have that much, I don't think. Oh, maybe we do. It's 105. Well, let's focus on that plan burn and lock that. Okay. Well. I think this is yet another time for a very judicious RCS burn. Oh gosh, that wasn't judicious enough because I had the SAS, well, or whatever, the, uh, whatchamacallit, Glock current heading on. Okay, judicious actual thrust burn. Oh. Oh, too much. Okay, let's see. For that, all is an approach. It's the important part. And we've got 163 left after it. I think it says 500 kilometers, which is pretty high. More than I wanted. We've got only 3.7 days to be in Herma's SOI. <laughs> They really, yeah, uh, okay, well, we're not going to make it, folks. 
It says six days there. This is ridiculous. We can't even. I launched and immediately went. We didn't even loiter. We didn't have time to make the transfer. It was pretty home and home and transfer. Where did he expect me to start out from exactly? Yep. Well, I'll get the tech points, I guess. I mean, we can go faster to it, it's just not very efficient to do it. Oh, yeah, Herma flyby. Discover Herma achievement unlocked and everything. At least we did the CubeSat mission, and I actually paid for the rocket. So there's that. Well, let's go ahead and make Solero Orbit. I think we can. Let's see. Okay, that's 106, and I think we'll be in orbit. And then, if we can, I don't know if we have the Delta V for it yet, but I want to crash it into... not cra Well, crash it ultimately into Solero, but... I'm wondering if we can... That's Herma. We didn't actually look at it much. It's just a rock, though. But, um, yeah, I'm wondering about arrow braking at Solero. So, we're going to do an arrow braking test, which leads us to crash. Probably into a pole, maybe. Just a little bit overdue. Hmm. Herma's all the way back there. Where did I get Solero? There you are. Well, uh, I guess that's good enough. It acknowledges that I'm in orbit, right? Okay, we want it as high in orbit as possible so that we can pull the orbit down. We've only got 56 meters per second now. How much will it take to take the orbit down? Into the atmosphere. We might just burn up, of course. Oh, we have plenty. I don't know if 32 is the atmosphere or not. I don't know anything about the atmosphere. We're going to find out about it. I think we'll go with 32. Uh, a little bit past. Okay, well, anyway. We don't actually need the maneuver. We only need to pay attention to that periapsis. Okay, very dark. Where's retrograde? Are you retrograde? You seem to be retrograde. 38. Okay, well, stabilization off, RCS on. 32. Okay. We'll probably need RCS to reorient once we get close, but in we go. I mean, assuming that Solero's atmosphere is somewhere there. Maybe we'll get some points for Solero, Solero's atmosphere? I don't know. Wow, uh, pretty close to the pole right there. Look at that. Ah, uh, if only we're landing right there. See outside. You can never find the... Well, there's the pole. It's not slowing, taking me out of time warp or anything. So we're not hitting atmosphere right now. Oh, now we are. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll use a little bit of engine thrust to flip around. Just best to have your control core on the opposite side from re-entry. No idea how aerodynamics is going to like this. Sort of... I can't use much mod propellant right now. The solar panels might be destroyed, I don't know. Don't need it to lock current heading, necessarily. Our orbital speed is decreasing. Oops. Our apoapsis is coming down. 32 is too low. 
32 will have us going straight into the ground, it looks like. So that's not a good capture arrow breaking, necessarily. Since we only use like 100 meters per second to capture, and we're basically gonna come straight down like this. Probably we need to aim higher for a capture arrow break. But landing is sort of- oh! Something blue. Oh, it's probably a solar panel. Yeah. Gosh, the solar panels. I, I wish it would rip off without causing us to spin all over the place. Thank you. Solero's atmosphere feels a lot thicker than... Maybe... Oh, it's been a while since I've flown through dunas, so... I don't need the solar panels anyway, it's fine. We've got 100% battery. <laughs> We're not doing anything soon, so... We can go. It's fine. So dramatic. I mean, it doesn't read that thick right now. Exceeding one kilometer on Solero. This counts as flying through the atmosphere. Well, we're gonna be... I got an achievement unlock. Aerospace legend here. I'm a little Mars helicopter. I am. Well, I might as well try and see retrograde. Oop. At this point, it doesn't feel very thick, the atmosphere. I'm dumping the mop propellant. Oh, no, we have to turn it on first. Dumping mop propellant. That's all we had left. <laughs> okay, full thrust. I swear some parts survived that. <laughs> they just bounced up. We didn't get a landing thing? Come on. You did a landing thing for Luna. Ah, That totally landed. Well, it landed as much as the Luna one did. It says 69 meters per second surface velocity, by the way. Um, gosh, I was hoping for a nice landing thing, but I guess they fixed that. <laughs> And flight. Okay, well, we saved flight. We did a lot of things. We got the CubeSats and all. Okay, well, sort of a disappointment because we didn't get the right sort of result. But we've got a Solero Orbit contract. They, they have a Solero Orbit contract, but after having passed through the atmosphere of Solero, I'm looking for a Solero landing. So next time we are going to try to land on Solero. So I'm going to accept that contract and uh, there's also a Brigo landing here, but can no longer be accepted. Must be completed in 90 days. Now we have to watch out. This is 480 days. Um, gosh, that yeah, we have to cancel that. And we have to cancel that because it's not the right timing yet, but I don't know when the right timing is. So we're going to do the, we're going to do the Brigo landing contract. Because I know I can do the Brigo landing in 90 days. And we'll use the Brigo landing contract to see and time warp to the Solero orbit contract. We'll have to land first and then time warp. And then we will get the Solero orbit contract. Hopefully it'll still be here. But it says it can no longer be accepted after 30 days. So we'll see. It depends how long it's taken us to get over to Solero. Maybe we're in alignment again. Or maybe we can't pick it up yet. So we'll see. But uh, yeah. Timing, as we've discovered in this particular episode, is tight. So we'll try bigger landing first, just to accumulate funds, and then we will try that slower orbit. Hopefully. So, with that being the plan, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.